Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Forest Preserve District of Cook County Bobian Woods Boat Launch Restroom and Utilities uh, Pre-Bid and Technical Review Meeting, contract number C1614. My name is Patricia Montenegro. I'm the contract officer for the project. Today we will be um, going over introductions, procurement details, uh, compliance matters, and then uh, we will uh, then follow with the technical review and uh, questions and answers. So at this time, we'll begin with a quick round of um, introductions. Um, I'll turn it over to James. Hi, good morning, everybody. James Borkman, Director of Procurement at uh, PBC. Patrice. Good morning, Patrice Doe, Compliance PBC. Randy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Randy Williams, Deputy Director of Construction, PBC. Kenneth. Good morning, everyone. I'm a project manager, Kenneth Dillard of the PBC. Ryan. Brian Ledoux, uh, PBC Environmental. Thank you. Brian Payne, PBC uh, Communications. Thank you, Brian. Cal? Cal Lejeune, Director of Planning and Design. Thank you, Cal. And then um, I believe, oh, Justin? Good morning, Justin Cafferty, Public Building Commission. Thank you. All right. I don't see anybody from the PBC team, so I'll move forward to our client. Um, Lori, please introduce yourself. Good morning, Lori Naiman, uh, Chief Building Architect with the Forest Preserves of Cook County. And then we have Maria. Yeah, uh, Maria Larkin, Associate Building Architect, uh, Forest Preserves of Cook County. And then I, we have, we have the architect, so I'll turn it over to Arvin to introduce his team. Good morning, Arvin Villanueva, Principal of EVA Design and Engineering. Uh, Chris Mealy, EVA Design and Engineering. Uh, Todd Nemec, SMNGA Architects. Okay, very good. Thank you, everyone. I believe that's all that I see listed here. Uh, Aaron mm -hmm. Kirks just joined from Forest Preserves. Oh, okay. Aaron, please introduce yourself. Yeah. Yep, I'm Aaron Cricks. I'm the chief civil engineer. Uh, sorry, I thought this was starting at 1030. So, but no uh, worries. I'm here. Okay. No worries. Okay, uh, we'll begin with um, procurement details. So um, the project location is um, 950 East 134th Street in Chicago, Illinois. It's located in Ward 10. And the general scope of work includes the construction of a new uh, prefabricated restroom facility, associated site improvements and utilities at the Bobian Woods Boat Launch. The time of completion, we have a substantial completion date of uh, no later than September 15th, 2025. Um, and we have a scheduled milestone um, that would include permitting, mobilization, site control, and submittal preparation. Um, and that milestone date is March 31st, 2025. And again, with the substantial completion for the uh, prefabricated restroom facility and associated site improvements for September 15th, 2025. Um, our team will go over specific details with regards to the site. Um, and go into further detail with the time of completion during the technical review aspect of the, the program here. Liquidated damages is $1,500 per day for failure to achieve the substantial completion date and $500 per day for failure to achieve schedule milestone number one. The documents, um, the procurement documents can be found on PBC's current opportunities page, um, procurement documents and uh, related procurement details specific to this project can be found on that current opportunities page. And then the entire bid set um, can be found on Cushing and Company's 
plan room and the link is provided uh, on this uh, PowerPoint presentation, which will be uploaded to the current opportunities page as well. Um, and you'll be able to find it there along with uh, the recording of this video. The assist agencies uh, listed on this screen here also have a set of um, documents um, so that if general contractors uh, have any MBE, WBE um, partners that you know um, need assistance with the documents, our assist agencies are ready and willing to assist. Again, the technical review is scheduled for uh, 10.30, so immediately following this meeting. Um, there is no um, site visit scheduled um, for this project, but the site is open and available and accessible uh, for anyone who wants to um, pass through and inspect the site. Um, failure you know, to um, become familiar with the project shall not relieve um, or alter the bidder's responsibility for completing the work. Requests for information shall be submitted in writing to the sole point of contact, uh, which is myself, at patricia.montenegro at cityofchicago.org. And there is a deadline for questions, and that deadline is October 1st by 4 p.m. So again, we strongly encourage that everyone um, submit their questions in writing via email to my attention. Um, please ensure that in the subject line, you have uh, the project um, name listed as a subject matter uh, so that we can properly identify your question. To date, we have not re um, issued any addenda, but uh, please ensure that you are signed up for PBC alerts as that is the, um, fastest way to ensure that you receive uh, the addenda alert. The bid due date and time is October 17th at 11 a.m. So the bid opening will be streamed live on PBC's YouTube page and uh, it will be streamed live recorded and then available again on our current opportunities page. Um, and uh, both links are provided on the screen as well. Bid submission requirements. We are requesting electronic submission um, of the bids. So it's gonna be one complete copy of your bid document Original signatures in blue ink or digital signature is acceptable. Please ensure that you submit your bid bond um, and please ensure that you submit your uh, master bid form along with the award criteria sheet, both within the uh, copy of the bid document and then separately in an Excel and PDF PDF format within that email. Um, so again, it's the entire bid document and then the master bid form separately in Excel and PDF. If you are, excuse me, if you are unable to submit electronically, um, please submit your request in writing to my attention um, so that we can uh, consider uh, alternate submission format here. The pre-award meeting um, will follow after the bid opening on October 22nd at 2 p.m. Um, of course, all of the dates listed here are subject to change, um, but that will be held virtually and that would also um, the meeting invitation will be uh, forwarded to the apparent low bidder. 
The notice of award is anticipated to be issued after our November 2024 uh, PBC Board of Commissioners meeting. And we wanna just um, advise the apparent low bidder uh, to please ensure that um, following that notice of award that you submit your certificate of insurance and payment and performance bond because it's gonna be requested within seven days of that notice of award. Book one and book two highlights. So the estimated construction budget is found in book one, page four. It is between 1.5 million and $2 million. The mandatory project staffing requirements are found in book one, page four. Scheduling software requirements, book one, page four. Liquidated damages, book one, page six. Prevailing wage rates, book one, page six, and page 39. And contractor trade requirements, if applicable, book one, page 22. Joint venture opportunities, of course, the PBC always welcomes joint venture opportunities between prime contractors and MBE and WBE firms or all other firms. Um, Please ensure that uh, you provide us with, um, it's a three page joint venture affidavit. So please ensure that you submit this along with your bid if you are joint venturing and that you provide us with um, your joint venture agreement and then any certification letters that would be associated with any MBE or WBE firm. The bid form currently, um, well, this is snipped, obviously, but um, it looks similar to what you see on the screen here. So um, the firms will enter your base work only on line one. And then we have alternates on this project. So alternates one and two um, should be populated in obviously line two and three, and then everything else um, will automatically populate in all of these other lines here. The bottom of the bid form also includes an area for you to submit your surety information, and then for you to um, identify your firm name and provide the date for which you're submitting your bid. The total award criteria figure, so for in this instance, because of the um, alternate scenarios, you have your award criteria figure for just your base work only, and then you have award criteria for your alternate one scenario, and then you have another award criteria um, figure formula for your alternate two scenario, and Patrice, from our compliance team, we'll go over further um, details with regards to the, uh, the award criteria. But essentially, bidders will put their figures in these little green lines here. The basis of award is found in book one, page 10. Award will be made to the lowest responsive bidder, submitting the lowest criteria between those lines nine and 11 of the bid form and otherwise responsive to all the requirements of the contract documents. Firms are required to fill out the entire bid form. So when we mean the entire bid form, it's that bid form that we had on screen plus the award criteria figure sheets. The commission reserves the right to reject any uh, bid and wherever such rejection is in the best interest of the commission and bids that the PBC considers to be materially unbalanced will be rejected. So as I mentioned previously, we have alternates. Um, and so we have a alternates description part in book one, page 12, and then the actual descriptions and where we need the contractors to also identify their um, proposed alternate pricing would be on page 17 of book one. The alternate descriptions are also found within the drawings. Okay, at this time, I'll turn it over to Patrice for her, 
her section. Good morning. So for this project, the MBE WBE goals is 32% MBE WBE aggregate, meaning that uh, the goal can be met by an MBE, a WBE, or a combination of MBEs and WBEs. We only accept certification from the city of Chicago or Cook County. Uh, also additional information about our MBE and WBE program can be found in special conditions, uh, section 23 in book two. Next, Patty. So Patty had mentioned the award criteria figure, a maximum of 70% minority journey workers, minority apprentice, minority laborers, a maximum of 15% female journey workers, female apprentice and female laborers uh, for the total hours work. So when you are completing that award criteria figure, you should understand what goal you would like to set for the project. Um, if you want to do 50% minority journey apprentice and labor and 10% female journey apprentice and labor, it is your business decision. But whatever you commit to is if you awarded to the project is what you're contracted to do. But the maximum that you are allowed to say is 70% in the minority journey apprentice and labor category, 15% in the female journey, female journey apprentice and labor category. Uh, just be mindful when you're bidding uh, those requirements. And that is based on the total hours worked, the total number of hours worked by the trades people on the project. We also have a community hiring goal, which is 7.5% of the total hours worked and a city residency goal, which is 50% of the total hours worked on the project. Next, Patty. This is the community area map for the project. The 7.5% of hours worked on this project must come from these community areas. It is a requirement of uh, the project that 7.5% of community residents are from these community areas. Compliance, uh, our monitoring system is B2G Now, is where we monitor our uh, payments uh, for our subcontractors. Uh, LCP Tracker, which uh, is where we do our certified payrolls, uh, submission of certified payrolls is submitted through the LCP Tracker uh, system. And that's where we determine the total hours work for the project uh, for suppliers, manufacturers, and brokers. Manufacturers of MBE and WBEs, they receive 100% credit. For suppliers, they receive 60% credit. And for brokers, there's 0% credit. And the certification uh, from the city of Chicago or Cook County identifies if the MBE or WBE is a manufacturer, a supplier, or a broker. Uh, you must submit Schedule Ds and Cs. The Schedule D should be completed by the contractor that is bidding on this project. This Schedule D determines the credit amount. It may not equal the contract amount, but it is the credit amount, and it should equal 32% MBE, WBE, or more uh, of the aggregate goal. Next, Schedule C should be completed by the subcontractor. And I would like for you to note at the top is where you put your MBE, WBE, who they are a sub to. If they are not a sub to the general contractor that is bidding on this project, then it should be identified who they are a sub to. For instance, suppliers are normally a sub to, if it's electrical supplier, they're normally a sub to the electrical contractor not the prime contractor. So when you receive the form, the schedule C back from your supplier or any other MBEs, WBEs, make sure the uh, section who they're sub to is completed correctly on the front page. Also the dollar amount and the scope of work. The scope of work must be relevant to what they're certified in. So if it's an electrical contractor, 
their MBE or WBE certification letter shouldn't say plumbing. It can say some have plumbing, electrical, HVAC, but uh, it should be identified. The scope of work should be identified with the certification on their certification letter from the city of Chicago or Cook County, which are the only two certifications that we accept. The second page, which is the green section, sometimes subcontractors do not complete that section. And what it's saying is if you're subletting any work, not supplies, but if any work that's being performed on a project and you're subletting it to a non-MBE or a MBE and WBE, we, the information needs to be completed. If it's a non MBE, for instance, uh, HVAC, sometimes the controls is sub let subcontracted to a non-MBE, WBE, and it's 10%, then on that Schedule D, that's where the credit amount will go. If they are subletting 10% to a non-MBE, WBE, and their contract value is $100,000, then $90,000 will go on that Schedule D. Similar to if it's a supplier and their contract value is $100,000, then $60,000 should appear on the Schedule D. Not the full contract value, but the credit amount. The uh, GC or Prime should complete the Schedule D and a subcontractor should complete the Schedule C. Back to you, Patty. Thank you, Patrice. Um, so again, the sole point of contact um, during this procurement um, is Patricia Montenegro. Um, so please submit all questions again um, to my attention, and then we will um, review uh, for um, consideration um, of a response via addenda. At this time, I will turn it over to our development team um, to um, move forward with the technical review aspect of the um, meeting here. Randy or Kenneth? Thank you. Good morning, again, everyone. Uh, Thank you. Thank you again for uh, joining us in this uh, technical review of the Ebobian Woods project. Certainly <clears throat> appreciate the opportunity working with our partners with Forest Preserve and also uh, our architects that they will, on this project, will take us through <clears throat> the technical review. Uh, and at this time, I'll turn it over to our project manager, uh, Kenneth Dillard. Thank you, Randy, Patrice, and Patricia. Um, Kenneth Dillard, uh, <clears throat> just want to go quick, quick overview for the project. The project is located in the 10th Ward, 950 East 134th Street, Chicago, Illinois. As you can see, the property line highlighted in the red um, kind of boxed in between southeast of the Argdale, Argdale Gardens, just north of the Little Calumet River, and uh, west of I-94, the highway uh, on the right side. Um, and I just want to mention again the highlighted uh, goal dates. Uh, we do have a milestone one date, which is includes the permitting, mobilization, and submittal preparation. This should be achieved by March 31st of 2025. And then we do have the substantial completion date, which includes the prefabricated uh, building of the restroom facility and the associated site improvements um, which should start no sooner than April 1st of 2025 and should be achieved by September 15th of 2025. Um, I will hand it over to our partners, um, partnering architects, Ava, for the more uh, defined scope. Thank you, Kenneth. At, and I guess part of this uh, technical overview, uh, we'll start with the description of the existing conditions and move into the proposed improvements, which will uh, touch upon the site logistics of the project, the new building design, uh, utilities, and the soil handling topics. 
uh, on your screen on the bottom left is an overview of the, the site area uh, and Bobian Woods Preserve. Um, Bobian Woods is, as mentioned earlier, is located on the south side of the uh, south side of Chicago near Alcalt Gardens, and it fronts the uh, Little Calumet River to the south. The district property is approximately 240 40 acres in size and um, and and promotes natural open space uh, open spaces and venues that uh, already has a couple of amenities, including picnic groves, a uh, boat launch, a canoe and kayak launch, and an overlook uh, over the uh, Little Calumet River. Um, these amenities are supplemented by activities such as fishing, birding, kayaking, hi uh, hiking, and um, uh, and also, um, uh, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> um, if I guess I mentioned also the amenity here is also uh, some parking as well. Um, but um, two two projects that we want to make uh, make mention or mention as part of this uh, bid project are. Um, are, is the rehabilitation of the uh, overlook and construction of a new ADA uh, accessible boat launch. The photos of, um, uh, of the construction progress for this particular project are shown on the top right or off to the right here. Uh, this project is, uh, as mentioned, is in current construction, uh, but will be completed uh, in part of uh, the 2024 year. We're expecting late fall. The other project that we want to uh, mention too is the future trail project, uh, which is slated for 2025. Both these projects are going to be uh, in and around the vicinity of the proposed uh, restroom project. And uh, this is why we want to bring, uh, bring these to light. Um, the next slide, Patty. So uh, the proposed project is introducing a new um, prefab restroom building uh, to Bobian Woods. The site is located, or the subject restroom building is located just north of the um, aforementioned boat launch uh, and canoe, uh, canoe launch. Um, then, um, as part of this project too, is the construction of new utilities. There are no existing utilities other than stormwater that's active in this uh, in the subject site. So new electrical, uh, new water service from uh, the city of Chicago and uh, sanitary is part of the project. Uh, other improvements uh, involved with this particular project is uh, the construction of a new drinking fountain, uh, flat work uh, improvements to, uh, to provide access, ADA compliant access to the restroom and surface restoration inclusive of uh, asphalt pavement and uh, existing green uh, and habitat lawn restoration. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, uh, being that th this project is a forest preserve project, there are site-specific restrictions uh, involving uh, habitat areas uh, associated with the presence of the long-eared bat and osprey uh, bird. Uh, along with the project milestones uh, that Kenneth had mentioned earlier, there are uh, construction activity res res restrictions and parameters uh, for this uh, construction project. These are all specified on sheet G300, which is the site logistics plan. Um, an excerpt of the site logistics plan is shown here uh, on the screen uh, and on, G on sheet G300. Um, there are uh, specified uh, requirements that delineates the construction access uh, areas, um, dedicated site staging and soil uh, stockpile areas as well, all on site. Um, coincid uh, co I guess coinciding areas uh, with the future trail project that is not in contract with this project, but will be slated for 2025, as mentioned earlier. Uh, location uh, and limits of the easement for the water main connection at the Northwest. Uh, and sensitive buffer areas for the osprey pole that is uh, uh, identified here on in. Um, more details are on sheet G300 specifying uh, key dates, timelines, and uh, the aforementioned uh, milestone uh, target dates. Um, with that being said, let's transition into the uh, prefabricated uh, restroom building, and then we'll move into the utilities afterwards. Todd? Thank you, Arvin. Um, the, uh, the, the, the project features a prefabricated and pre-engineered uh, building. The basis design for that uh, is by a company named CXT. It's the Dakota model. 
uh, it's essentially an all precast um, site shipped or site ship, you know, a deliverable sort of product. However, all the MEP and FP sort of related items are all going to be installed on site. Uh, please be mindful that some of the standard things that come with this model with um, as far as accessories, toilet accessories and hardware and things like that, there are some, um, some of those are being augmented with uh, preferences of the, of the forest preserve to, uh, so just be mindful that um, with the prefab, some of the accessories and so forth will be covered in the separate divisions of uh, for toilet accessories and things of that nature. Uh, the important part to understand is that the foundations, the slab and uh, the MEP will all be installed in, on site the building will arrive and will need to be sort of wired up and connected, so to speak. Um, the building itself is only about 270 square feet. It has two fully accessible toilet rooms in the center with two uh, uh, single user toilets on the flanking sides and a chase, uh, contiguous chase behind all those. So all the uh, plumbing will run in that chase. Um, it's a simple gable uh, structure. The roof and walls are all uh, precast concrete. Um, we have identified locations for some of the key uh, electrical elements just so that we can uh, avoid some um, conflicts in the field. So be mindful of that for hand dryers and things like that, which will have to be field wired and installed. Um, I think that covers it, uh, unless you have something else you'd like to add. Uh, Arvin or Chris? I don't think so, Todd. I think we can go to the next slide um, on the utilities, Patricia, if you don't mind. So um, Arvin sort of touched on this a little bit uh, in the logistics discussion, but uh, the site requires um, utilities, new utilities, particularly um, electrical service, water service, and sanitary sewer. Uh, the sanitary sewer um, is handled near the building. We'll, we'll show that on the next slide. Um, it's a holding tank uh, that's near the proposed um, restroom structure. The two utilities shown on this sheet are water in blue and electrical in red. Uh, they are a significant distance um, from connection to proposed utilities. So we'll start with water in blue. Um, the run on the drawings is about 1,900 linear feet right now. Um, most of that is required to be trenchless um, utility installation that is documented in the specs and the drawings. Um, there's several boring pits noted in the drawings. Um, those will be coordinated with the contractor and boring information um, will need to be provided from the selected contractor. Connection of the water main or water service will occur at 133rd and Greenwood near Elk Elk Gardens. And that will connect to the existing city of Chicago um, eight inch water main at that point. Electrical service is similar. Uh, base bid for electrical service is trenchless uh, installation. Um, really the trenchless uh, is to minimize impact to the existing preserve and wooded and grassed areas of the site. Uh, there are two alternates associated with electric utility as mentioned previously. Um, those are documented on the drawings and in the specs as well. Um, one alternate will cover open cut of the electric service. The other alternate will cover open cut and concrete encasement of the proposed electric services. All this is in the plans and specs. Um, I think that's it for utilities. You can go to the next sheet, Patricia. Uh, so this is just a, a detailed um, view of the actual site where the restroom is going to go. Um, there are pavement improvements associated with the restroom building as well. There'll be some concrete walkway um, around the new building structure. There will be some asphalt restoration, curb restoration, um, and then crosswalk pavement markings. The holding tank will be in the vicinity here too on this plan. You can um, see the drawings for more information. And then there's landscape restoration too. 
think that's it. I'll turn it over to, I don't know if Ryan, PVC Environmental wants to speak or anybody else. I think that's it for this technical part. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Chris, I can chime in. Um, now from the environmental aspect, as, as Chris had mentioned, um, the utilities uh, are going to be trenchless. Um, there will be access points. Um, but the soil to be managed on site, or shall be managed on site, um, and that is going to be uh, something that will be coordinated, uh, you know, the location of on-site soil management um, during the project, but it will be on located on site uh, within uh, or close in, in close proximity to the project. Area. So um, in the specifications, you will see a potentially impacted property assessment. Um, it does identify you know, some film materials, but uh, those are all, again, to be handled on site. Um, you know, so there should be no haul off required uh, for for any of the uh, you know utility installation as well as the uh, building installation. So um, again, um, we're minimizing uh, any type of fall off uh, or eliminating uh, any type of call for that. Um, and I think that's from an environmental aspect. I think that should take care of uh, most of the uh, environmental management on this on the project. I don't know. Okay. Thank um, you, Ryan. Um, do we have any further comments from any of our, um, our you know, architect or uh, development team? Nothing for me, Arvin. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, we can open up the floor for any questions in, in regards to the, the bid process and the project documents. Um, well, we do not have any contractors in attendance, um, so therefore, um, there would not be, um, any questions, um, so again, this, this video will be placed on our website, and um, the contractors at this time, you know, have the documents. Um, we have advertised via our uh, PBC alerts, and we also have advertised via the Sun Times. Um, so, just everyone, as well as our assist agencies, Patty. Correct. So, um, you know. We expect, you know, to receive questions, and it, and if we don't, then that's that's great. Uh, we have some pretty clear drawings then, and and then we just look forward to um, receiving bids on October seventeenth. Um, so I just want to remind everyone to please ensure that you submit questions to Patricia Montenegro at City of Chicago org. We thank everybody for their presentation today. And um, and thank you for joining us. This concludes the pre-bid.